coming up are right here on Circle of Heels, not debate, but heels. As we are joined <laughs> uh, with our brothers from another mother, the Dirty Heels podcast will be joining us on episode 38 as we're going to discuss about our thoughts of Impact Hard to Kill pay per view and also this past Tuesday's Impact of what occurred. And an invasion finally happened. A different team actually came to Impact and challenged the Good Brothers for the Impact Championship. Also, we'll discuss about AEW Dynamite, and this is a part two episode. This is part one that we're speaking of. Part two will be Pro Wrestling News, NXT, and a Dusty Classic Update Tournament, new debuts, and WWE. So make sure you tune in to episode 38, part one, and then part two right now. Welcome everyone to the Circle of Heels podcast. Not Circle of Debate, not Dirty Heels, but a Circle of Heels. Episode number 38. That's right, the host of Devious One, obviously. Here alongside my brothers from another mother. But first, we're going to introduce the other host of the Dirty Heels podcast. And that is, he gives the people what they want alongside with Good Brother Bold. And that is Kofi Winston. Oh, sweet. I am in it. Build it with my brothers, man. I love being here with you guys, man. This is like my second home right here. I love you guys, man. I'm here. I'm in the building, man. L.A. to New York. Right, dude? Definitely. definitely. West Coast connection, man. Definitely. I love you guys, man. That's right. You saw the background right here. This is Dirty Heels and Circle of Debate together right here. Picasa Sukasa right here. I don't speak Mexican. (laughs) You'll see. <laughs> I, th- I, I, I go to Trader Joe's and I think Soy Chorizo says my name is Chorizo. <laughs> and of course, ladies and gentlemen, that's my other brother from another mother. That is the one and only CK1, Chris Kennedy, and the Mad Hatter himself, the Carbonation Wait. Cabron, the Carbonation Maker. That is Mr. MGC Matthew Steamboat. The Big Bad <laughs> Booty Daddy is here. The Big Bad <laughs> Booty. There you go. <laughs> And now, triple B, triple B's. <laughs> That's right, yeah. triple B. And now, ladies and gentlemen, let me get my microphone ready. <clears throat> test and test it. Here we go. Did you test it out? Yes, sir, I did. Yes, okay. okay. I'm ready to go. Okay, okay here we go. Gotta make sure it's perfect. All right. Perfect. I gotta make sure it's perfect, this introduction. Yeah. This individual, ladies and gentlemen, he is a multi-time <laughs> recording artist, a graduate from Cal State Dominguez Hills, the 2018 a Los Angeles karaoke champion. He lives 1,977,000 miles from Winnipeg, Minnesota, Canada. He is the master disaster, the the king of sting, the man with the plan. And that is Money Mike Lopez. Money, money by God Mike. Let's get started, baby. This is awesome. (laughs) This is awesome. Oh, After man. that intro, Mike had to get one of those, man. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> for sure. I appreciate it. Yes. <laughs> definitely, definitely. All right, gentlemen, let's start. Let's get the start off. What a week of professional wrestling. So let's go ahead and start off with this past Saturday, which was Impact Hard to Kill. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and ask our brother, Kofi Weston, what were your thoughts about the pay-per-view? What you enjoyed the most out of it? Give us your thoughts. All right, for me, I didn't watch the whole thing. I watched mostly snippets of it. So, but the one thing I did watch and that did impress me was Moose. Yeah. Yes. Moose. Yes. That was a, probably the one thing I did take from out of everything I did see. I'm gonna see. I'm gonna say Moose because like, um, he wasn't even supposed to be there. Um, so for him to step in and really step up, even though they lost, step in and step up, and he did majority of the. The heavy work, heavy lifting and everything. So I got to say Moose. Moose is my my highlight for that night. Definitely, definitely. Mr. MGC, your thoughts? Man, Moose stole the show. Oh. That was like the best Spanish fly I've ever seen in my oh, life. Oh, man. That, yeah, you saw that Spanish fly. It was like, boom. That's how. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, 
you know, smash. I like. I could watch him. I think Moose and Kenny. I'm gonna say it right here. You're you're gonna hear it here first. Moose and Kenny could nearly surpass Okada. It's got the potential. Mm. The potential. That's a big... hear it here first. That Moose, is, is, Moose is that good. Moose is that good. That's magic. I haven't seen Kenny work with a tall guy. Like too many guys taller than him or too many like really tall dudes. So I'm waiting to see that. That's what I've been waiting for. Kenny's going to set a new record. He'll break the star scale, the beer scale again. Because over Ooh. here, it's the beer scale. Freaking eight beers. That's right. From, That's right. From David Seltzer water right here. <laughs> 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 I love it. I love it. Not Dave Meltzer. Ray David Seltzer. Seltzer. I can't even sit and say that name no more. I got Bill Seltzer. It's it's Seltzer. Oh, you know? man. Oh, man. Oh, yeah, but <laughs> I, I, that's a bold statement, though. Wow. For you to say that. I mean, for, the, that's all we make love. on this show, man. We're nothing but bold statements. Man. Yeah. That's a we great, got, yeah. We got, I got love for Moose. I got big love for Moose. He, he I mean, he's carrying that TNA title, you know, that yeah, the white belt. And he's put and he's putting respect on it. I love him. All right, CK one, your thoughts. Um, on that particular match or uh, the overall, direction? Overall, overall, overall. Okay, you know? cool, dope. Here's what I like: Impact is now pumping in the crowd sounds, which is a big reason I didn't feel connected to the show. Uh, it was a very silent arena up until they started. I mean, it was dead silent. Like you could hear the ring creaking. You could hear the. Um, the foots on the mats sweeping sound. It was just so hard to be entertained by, but they fixed it. And now I feel like I can watch it and be entertained completely now. Um, on that note, God damn that Eddie Edwards, Sammy Callahan, barbed wire massacre match. <laughs> wow. that's, exactly, that's straight where I'm going. Cause when you don't see a lot of those right now and they don't oversaturate the market, you get old school ECW vibes. You get the old man, um, Mick Foley, Terry Funk having to get, wire cuttered out of those barbed wire um fences man like that was the takeaway from the from the card for me because i knew how good the main event was going to be um that was kind of the, the surprise hit of the winter for me because i just love hardcore when it's done proper and and it's not done all the time um oversaturation of hardcore kind of bores me but when it's few and far between i get very excited and that's exactly what that did for me oh all right muddy mike talk to me yeah, man. Oh my goodness. As as great as Moose was in this, I got to say Rich Swan was definitely the the loser in this both in the match and 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 overall, I feel, because it kind of devalues the title that he's holding. I honestly thought that one of the Motor City Machine Guns was originally going to take the fall. But that's not that's not what happened, and uh, it, it, unfortunately, it, it went down on him. So, um, you know, we'll see what happens with him in, in the near future. So, definitely, yeah. I agree. But I, one thing I wanted to mention is well, which I will mention later on when we get into a, a dynamite. I'm going to mention one Easter egg on this one, and we'll jump sure. into we'll we'll jump into a conclusion once we d finish with AEW Dynamite. But one, I'm going to mention one Easter egg on this. We did see. Kenny Omega wearing a Bullet Club shirt. Mm, now, yeah. was one Easter egg that we're seeing, all right? You know, Doc Gallows has a Bullet Club jacket. You know? Yes. That, that well, was, his whole attire was Bullet Club. Did you yep. know an Easter egg? That was, they weren't trying to hide that. That was a statement, I feel. Like, yeah. you know, they're, but, put, they're getting that up in your face. You but I, I would explain, I will explain shortly why is an Easter egg because uh can't mention his name, but Mr. Uh, who knows it all, man, you Seltzer. Know, Seltzer yes, Walker. Seltzer. Yes. Did you just call him Seltzer? Yeah. <laughs> yeah he called him Seltzer, bro. Uh, so that's Dave, his new name. Dave Seltzer, yeah. Yes. Dave Seltzer. That's yeah, fucking Seltzer. Funny. Yeah, Seltzer made some comments, which I will discuss about that. But yes, definitely, overall, the whole card was great. You know, a debut came in, Matt Cardona, you know, always ready. Woo, woo, woo. Made his debut as well. Congratulations oh, yeah. to him. And also congratulations to Kira Hogan and Tasha Steele for becoming the Knockouts Tag Team Champions as well. And that's a cool. shout out to Brother Bo for what he forgot on the last episode you guys had. If you guys remember that, <laughs> yeah, we, we totally forgot. Yeah, we totally <laughs> forgot. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I, I commented to him, like, Bo, you forgot this match. Oh, yeah, I knew I forgot because he was right. He forgot one match. But yes, shout out to him, even though he's not here today, but he's joining us in spirit. He's here with us in spirit. Yes, he's here with us in spirit. 
that's right, definitely, definitely. Also, shout out to the other League of Extraordinary Podcasters, to Jonah, Recall, Rewind, Recap, Relive, Joe Phone the Ring. Here we go. That's I'm right. literally talking go. to Jonah like right now, like not like right now, but like just before we started, I was talking to him. So love, <laughs> love that guy. Uh, what up, Jonah? Bonsoir. Bonsoir. <laughs> He's from New York, not. Paris. Yeah, yeah, Jonah him too. Now I'm saying that. If you want to talk to Jofo? I think one of the I think one of the one of the team Jofos speak French, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm saying I'm yeah, saying yeah. I'm romancing Jonah. Oh, oh. I don't know. Okay, not because he's French. I'm being romantic with. No, because he's, he's a strapping young, a strapping yeah, young he's lad. Gorgeous man. He's got that tuxedo. Come on. <laughs> yeah, but remember, it's the tuxedo, but no pants. Oh, there we go. That's I, I'm ro- I'm romancing you. Yeah. Little right. inside baseball on the podcast world, right there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right, you, yeah, yeah. You let out the secrets, bro. <laughs> Jonas is fucking he let that secret out on the Thanksgiving episode. That was, his, that was his. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. He did. He did. You're right. You're right. I, I forgot about that. And also, shout out to James at 90s Wrestling Podcast as well. And shout, shout out to him. Shout out to Here Backstage yo. Brawl. Also, our you know, other brothers, Backstage Brawl, Randy and Eric. Shout out to the Ring Fanatics. Shout out to Anthony from the, the Titan Tron and Mike and Tyler from Counter Out. So shout out to the League of Persuasive Podcasters. Now let's move on. Now was uh, now after that we did see uh, this past week's impact. Uh, we did see now finally an invasion, which we see we saw the debut of Private Party showing up, invading Impact and challenging the Good Brothers for the Impact World Champion Tag Team Championships. But before they get to that, they had to face James Storm and Chris Saban for Saban. that spot. So. I'll go back to you, uh, Mr. CK1. Since you, you know, since you love Saban, talk to me. I, I love everything. Oh. I love everything that's going on in the world right now, pro wrestling. That's uh, not main roster. Um, Fact. <laughs> Fact. That's Fact. just a fact. It's a, it is what it is, man. There's waves. It comes and goes in waves. I didn't watch a lot of ruthless aggression, but when I came back, everything was great. And then now we're, I think, kind of in a lull right now. But and it, um, NXT, TNA, and AW are shaking things up. They are shake and bake um (laughs) i don't know what to do with my hands because this invasion (laughs) angle is awesome and because there's no crowd in tna you don't really have a heel versus face invasion going on like you did the nexus in the main roster um i'm not cheering or booing when one side goes to the other side do you you understand what i'm saying Mm mm-hmm I'm cheering when it goes in either direction. When Good Brothers show up in AEW, I'm cheering. Private Party, totally marked out with. Didn't see that coming. That was awesome. Um, I love Thunder Rosa coming in from NWA. I mean, there's a whole trifecta of invasions going on, and I'm cheering every time someone shows up. And that's – I love that. I um, I don't know who's next, man. Like, I, I don't know what the next move is. I don't know who's going to go from where to where these little moves that are happening in this little Bermuda triangle of awesomeness is um, has, has me giddy and full of curiosity. And I can't wait to see where um, it ends up. If it's going to be just like a giant crossover pay-per-view, which I Tony Khan and Don Callis, you heard it here first, man, you got to put on a mega event with uh, at least two of you got two of your brands together. Yeah, um, definitely. Definitely. As far definitely. as uh, private party and Matt Hardy, man, like I, I got thoughts about where that angle is going with them as a trio. Um, we'll get to that when we move over to Dynamite, but I'm excited no matter what happens right now. Like, there's not a look, there's, there's not, I look forward to everything. That's it. There's nothing I don't look forward to from both brands. Uh, okay. All right. MGC, talk to me. Let me talk to you. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting for you to say something. <laughs> Let me talk to you. Yeah. So, <laughs> that can... <laughs> Yeah, and that, that's just and you know just letting you know that's not an insult. That's just a fact of life. Um, that you know we could we could have anybody. You know we could even see we could even see you know yeah we could even see him come in. Eli, Eli Drake, yeah, Eli Drake, Tell yeah. Me. We could see him. We could see him come in there. That's another one. But like you know Har- Hardy Party coming in and you know all the all. The- <laughs> that's the name. Hardy Party. Love Hardy it. Party. I love it. We could see them all yeah, coming in and out. <laughs> I mean, I mean, let's let's get every promotion that isn't WWE in existence if it's possible. You know, 
I'm I mean like one of the things I was kind of hoping for was like the second Moxley showed up and was getting beat up on like if you get if you got a side if you got attacked by the Good Brothers I was hoping for a Sammy Callahan run in and that could have been like hey CZW brothers forever like yep. come in, yeah. you know, clap, throw them, oh, throw them. Yeah. old combat zone still doing the damn thing yeah. Com- yes, sir. combat zone like old war buddies bleed together that would be if there's anybody if there's anybody sh- that should be allied with john moxley in a faction it should be Sam yeah. Callahan. a lot of people don't know that mox used to take like forks to the forehead like he was uh, abdullah the butcher yep. i mean mm-hmm. yep. that dude CCW. was like yep he was just like a fucking hardcore grinder like necro butcher you know? yeah he didn't even really wrestle he fought and bled and it was violent and uh then he I, don't mean to digress. I don't mean to digress, but if you guys want to go check out that CZW, it is also on the Dirty Hills podcast. Ah, uh, that's right. That is right. Plug. Shameless self promotion. And there we go. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah, you guys check that out. And you know the other the other run in. You know, like we're talking about the holiday season. I'm not gonna. I won't stop mentioning, even though people say it's never gonna happen. You know, I'm I'm wishing to Santa. I'm wishing to the heavens. You know, all I want for Christmas is Kenta, you know, just that's uh, also old school CCW or like medium. Yeah. School. <laughs> I want that was the other run in I wanted to happen. You know, Sammy Callahan or and and or Kenta to come in just the yeah. second, the second, like, like the second Moxley's like, because I'm pretty sure that feud, that feud needs to be over with Kenny and Moxley, to, in, to be honest, because kind of is kind of is. Yeah. I mean, he, they talk about it on the mic, how he wants that redemption. But like, yeah, I don't want that rubber match. I don't want like, like I've already that's run its course. I think like Mo- the second Moxley starts calling out Kenny, I want Kenta to show up. It's like, hey, you've got another problem to worry about. And it's yeah. it's here in oh, Florida. Bro. And bam, oh, he gets bro. he gets the go to sleep. And Can you kick, imagine? That's what we fire. need. It's like no, Moxley, no, like no. the you don't have that belt, but I, there's a belt you still have, and it and it's mine. That would be like Tommy the, the Tommy Dreamer RVD match that never happened. That yeah. would be fucking mm-hmm. sick, dude. Pretty yeah. dope. That's true. Mr. Wheatson, your thoughts. Um, uh, for me, Tuesday night was pretty dope. Uh I definitely did like the private party. Match pretty fire, like Chris said. I didn't really cheer for either or. I mean, I didn't really boof in anybody. I cheered for both sides. Um, I thought Chris, I mean, um, I thought Storm didn't work there anymore for a second. But that's right? you know, there. I didn't I didn't think he worked there anymore, but hey, <laughs> whatever. But I thought it was pretty dope. Um, I think the invasion angle is pretty dope. I don't mind it. They're not doing too much, but too little bit. Um, I just didn't understand how uh uh, the private party got a, a tag team match that I mean a tag team um title match that fast yeah Your championship match that fast but hey I'm not knocking it because I do realize Impact doesn't have that many tag teams so hey it is here nor there That's you know what I'm saying right. so um, for that I was I was pretty I'm I'm pretty cool with that I'm I'm fine with the invasion um like I said I'm mostly watching right now for the Moose and Rick Swan yeah the 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 promo that Moose cut on him at the end, and then he fought at the end. Uh, Rick Swan beat his ass at the end. Hey, I can't be mad. I was mostly watching for that. You know, I'm gonna be honest. Yeah, I agree. 100. Yeah, I love I love where Rich Swan is <clears throat> in his life. Um, yeah, I that's, spoke that's... about this I think last time when we talked about him, how he went from a, a dark place. We don't need to talk about the personal things that happened. It was very public. Um, yeah, but to go from that to world champion in a major organization. Fan fucking tastic work, buddy. Like, yeah, completely definitely. Around. I think he's got a one on one match with Kenny coming up. What was that? Just something, some fan thing I was seeing. That's April, right? No, well, it's not confirmed because he's not he's sure. Not confirmed yet because he's fighting Moose before any before anything. Oh, um, for the yeah. title, yeah. I'm expecting Omega to be be waiting for the winner of that match, but we'll have to wait and see. We have to wait and see that one. Money, Mike. Your thoughts about Private Party going to Impact? Not just Private Party. Not just Matt Hardy. Tony Khan and was oh. in the impact zone. <laughs> and, you know, for those people that are, are have that theory of Tony Khan secretly buying impact, uh, that's kind of a clue in that direction, if that is what happened, you know? But, which is totally likely. A kayfabe right? or, that could be a shoot or a work. I mean, that could be. It yeah, could yeah. be. It would yeah, be a could great be, one. Could, could go either way. Uh, but, but either way, I like questions. <laughs> I like asking questions and I like not knowing what's going on really. Yeah. And I feel that that's what intrigues the fans to come back and, and get more, more please 
from Impact and and AEW. Uh, this whole crossover, and I hope we start seeing a little bit more NWA involved. Uh, we've seen it in the women's division, uh, but I would like to see you know someone like Nick Aldis making the jump over too. Ooh, right? So yeah. you know this is the real title, real world title. So you know, yeah, and, fire. Right? So man, that would be you know, fire, man. But as a fan, uh, kind of looking into this, uh, I'm very much along for the ride. Uh, in in wrestling groups, I, I've seen fans kind of complain about it, like, oh, you know, this is taking too long or whatever. That's because WWE got us used to that sort of thing. So yeah, agreed. Things, you know, and, and, and there, it's kind of like spoiled everybody. But in any good story, it takes time. It You know, you got to craft it. And, and this that's what I feel like is going on right now. It's being crafted, and I'm along for the ride, and I'm enjoying it so far. Private Party in, in the Impact Zone also was a pretty cool choice, I would say. Uh, and uh, I would like to see more tag teams, more you know crossovers. It, it, everybody wins. It's only money. There you go. I'm going to say one more thing. Matt Hardy's character, awesome. Oh, oh yeah. 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 Money <clears throat> Matt. Love it. Money I think back. he's taking over where Brody Lee was taking over. Um, I think he's kind of doing the Vince McMahon bad contract. We own you angle. Okay. Uh, okay. That, yeah, I mean, he was talking about the Twitch. He was talking about the Twitch and the ownership and the you didn't read the fine print on the contract. And we yeah, own yeah. Money yeah. Back. I kind of think that they're, they're kind of just jumping a little over where, you know, where Brody Lee was sort of Vince and now. I don't mind it. I mean, exactly I think Matt Hardy does a totally, great job. Totally making fun of the yeah, uh, he did. Lena Vega thing. The, um, the Austin or Austin Apollo Creed. Austin Creed? Is, is, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Xavier Woods is Austin Creed, right? Yes, yes. There's no Apollo. Okay. Okay. There's Apollo <laughs> oh, Cruz. Okay. There we go. I yeah. wanted to say like a lot la a last thing about that Tony Khan and because Jerry Lynn, who came with Tony Khan, that's your former X Division champion. That's your mm -hmm. for yeah. that's a that's the legend of the exit. Like like AJ, that's AJ Styles OG rival right there. And not forget, like, Jerry Lynn and RVD and ECW. Like, Jerry uh -huh. Lynn's a legend. And the other feud I'm, I was praying for was, you know, on Twitter, they were they were kind of kind of cluing to it. Kenny Omega and Jerry Lynn was like, Kenny Omega's like, I'm going to retire you all over again. If you, oh, wow. You know, if you mouth off to me is what Kenny was saying to Jerry Lynn. And I was like, oh, I wanted that to happen. Jerry Lynn coming out of retirement for a, for a match for, with Kenny. And, of course, Kenny's, like, one of the safest workers out there. So that would have been... Mwah, you know RVD and Jerry, and then maybe that could lead into RVD appearing on AEW. And RVD, Kenny, Jerry Lynn, and that would have been, you know, those. And RVD could make his baby face come back to be because he was a heel before it was over. Yeah, yeah, I'm uh, all... I love it. I love it. I love it. Call us. You see, you see, you see this group right here. You gotta fucking call <laughs> us. Call us, man. We can write for you. We'll you write for call you. Call some more. <laughs> <laughs> You got to call all of us right here, man. We, we're right for you, Tony Khan. Mm. If anything, we can help out Papa Vinny get his shit together. Nah, man, we got to go help, yeah. out, we gotta go help uh, Genesis Syndicate. <laughs> okay, well, oh, yeah. We got to help out Brandon and Scotty from GSW. Yeah, that's, there you go. <laughs> Shout out to him. Global Syndicate. Sorry, my bad. Global Syndicate. All right. Let's move on now with Dynamite. Let's go on with the opening match. Speaking of private party, which we were just speaking about them, having, you know, opening the match up, you know, Hardy Party defeating, uh, you know, pretty. I said, you know, I said it was a dark order. Hey, 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 come dark on, order. Let's pay respects. Happy birthday, negative one. I, yeah. I was, hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> it was my birthday three days ago. <laughs> Happy birthday, negative two. <laughs> negative two, right? Negative two, yeah, right? Yeah. Yeah. Negative Kofi. So, yeah, yeah, I'm negative two. <laughs> <laughs> Negative yes. 420. Negative 420. Negative 420. Oh. Oh, there it is, bro. Nailed it. Negative 420 right love here. Love it. I love it. I love it. But, yes, Dark Order versus uh, TH2 and uh, Chaos Project. Uh, uh, the outcome of it, obviously, we did see Dark Order winning. Yeah, yeah. And we're all expecting, obviously, Hangman Page to say yes. But it didn't happen. He said no. Yeah, it didn't, oh, happen, didn't happen yet. Join the Dark Order. <laughs> I mean, you kind of knew it wasn't going to happen. I mean, they chased him around, and the gimmick was cool, and the story was cool, but you just kind of knew he was Yeah, almost, almost everybody they've solicited has joined from um, Alex Reynolds and um, John Silver and John Anna Silver. Day. 
and uh, yeah. Colt they've all they've all joined. So I mean, it's about time someone turned them down. Um, last week we spoke, and I think it was Ivan's idea. I love it that it, Hangman turns them down again, and they just beat the shit out of them, and that turns them back into yes. a heel. Because I yes. kind of have an issue. I have an issue with them being like the silly, goofy, evil team. I do too. Yes, it's not even Mike. Mike. Mike, did you say that? I'm going to give you credit. Was that your idea? That okay. Mike. Yeah. Sorry, Ivan. Sorry, Mike. Yeah, I'm over them being. I mean, give them their time to be silly and goofy, but they're an evil faction. So do some evil shit. I want that. Yes. Ooh, I, agree. I agree with Chris. I'm sorry, Mike and Steamboat, but I agree with Chris. But like I said, man, I'm tired of the goofy shit. What happened to in the beginning? There were these these guys that. They rarely came out, but when they came out, they kicked everybody's fucking ass and left. And you was like, holy shit. You know what I'm saying? The mask actually scared you when they first came out. You yeah. Saying, now, they had the minions, too. There was like 200 minions. Yeah, now it's just the so throne, weird. the throne with evil Uno sitting on the minions, dude. That was awesome. I want that. Yeah. Now it's just a little too goofy for me, and I can't really take it too serious anymore. Don't get me wrong. I'm still a big um, Dark Order fan, but I just can't really take him too too serious. That's probably why I see Hangman Page there and uh, you know, yeah, definitely. Yeah, I'm. I've literally been saying that for about a month. Um, so you know, <laughs> MGC. It's like it's like I I understand because of like you know the 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 real life situation they were like baby faces, but yeah. you know I guess they could slowly ease their way back into being heels. That's probably a good angle. They gonna take that that one move with the Hangman for sure. Yeah, with Hangman because like it's like you know it it doesn't really fit with Hangman's gimmick. And keep in mind because of the Impact AEW uh, merger, everybody was like like I remember Josh on a previous episode was talking about this. That you know, this is this would be like the best possible tag team, you know, we could get. And we I also posted in the group, you know, if you guys are part of it, you know, Cowboy James Storm and Hangman Page as a tag team. Freaking, I did see that. Cowboy badass, you know, and the best name that I got that I saw for that tag team, Ass Kickers Incorporated. <laughs> That's pretty dope. That's pretty and, fire. And okay. the person for somebody was suggesting Jake the Snake as the as the manager, but here's the person I'm recommending: Billy Gunn. Uh, you know, <laughs> Billy. Billy's got the experience, but but he's got he's got the ass and the cowboy gimmick all uh, rolled into yeah. one already. Uh, that Smoking is guns, true. Baby. Smoking but, guns. Uh, Smoking let guns. me let me mention a name in previous <gasps> episodes. I said it before. Tony Khan is willing to pay this man any amount of money he can to bring him on the show any amount that's how much tony khan loves him he'll he'll pay he'll probably pay him like 150 million dollars just for him to do this stone cold steve million? austin stone cold oh fuck, yeah man. oh you think yeah. steve austin will no he will he will he will it's a yeah it depends on how how like how much like vince is like if vince comes over to his house with with some sandwiches like vince please don't go to tony khan we've been best friends forever please please to steve austin's like, i don't know i don't know uh, vince uh, uh, i got Money my beer talk, you know i got yeah. i got my beer and you know tony khan's offering me you know 150 and i got this goddamn my, my truck and my ranch and you know and Hangman Page, good talent, and James Storm, goddamn, and we got I beer. I think Stone Cold's good without the money. Well, you know, he's doing yeah, it. Yeah, it feels, it feels well, I got, I got the fine, money, but... and you know, this James Storm, and goddamn, you know, <laughs> like it's gonna, be, <laughs> it's gonna be like that. And James Storm has been on the 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 Broken Skull podcast before, so so. Yeah, money, Mike. So, uh, it kind of this whole Dark Order limbo that they're in right now, it kind of goes back to the void that was left by Brody Lee, rest his soul. Uh, you, you know, they had the minions, you know, being goofy, and they were able to kind of maintain like a goofiness sort of thing. Uh, but you had the, the leader. The leader was the, you know, like the, the straight. You know, iron like, fist. Get, the iron fist, there you go. Like, like what the, you know, just go watch BTE and, and you will see how he yeah. kept them in, in line, right? Uh, so it, it it needs that it needs that uh, iron fist to be able to have that balance, right? Uh, so and, and and really like on dynamite when you know they had this whole thing where he they ha they had prepared for hangman like oh he said yes uh, and um, the, the disappointment in their faces I really thought that was it I was like okay this is it they're gonna kick his ass. They should have snapped right then and there. <laughs> it, that was the perfect opportunity, in my opinion. 
uh, to kind of, you know, have them be evil again. And, you know, because we, we all feel for their group and, and what they have been through the past few weeks. But it's time to get back to business. And, uh, you know, they're a heel group. So, you know, that would have been great right there. So, um, you know, we'll see what happens next. And I really, really feel that they need a new leader, maybe not necessarily an exalted one, but someone else that is like, like he says, the iron fist that keeps things, you know, straight. For me, I don't mind the little kid being the leader, negative one. Mm-hmm. I just think he needs to be a little more serious. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, be like a, a Macaulay Culkin type kid. Oh, there you, you know, go. Like, like a brat, like a mean. Yeah, like know. a brat, like a mean little brat type kid. You know what Spoiled, I'm saying? Like, you know? It would make a lot of sense, but, you know, but I definitely understand everything you're saying, Mike. I fucking agree 100%. Like in Robocop 2. I don't know if you guys have seen that. but the- Oh, Ooh, my yeah. God. I- <laughs> ready? Ready? Here's, here's the line. I, I, I remember this line from Robocop 2. Go look it up. What's the matter? Can't kill a kid, can you, motherfucker? <laughs> And it was this little twelve-year-old, this little twelve-year-old white boy talking shit to Robocop. I was like, I want to be that kid. Yeah, it's like he's like he's all like, we the people want drugs, we give them drugs. Yeah, I love dude. Great, yeah. great reference, bro. I love you, man. Kane, uh, Ed Two Hundred Nine. Yeah, dude. Fuck yeah, bro. I still See, I have that stuck. Kid, man. That's, that's how I learned about people going into shock. That's like Robocop's like, oh, 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 you're going into <laughs> shock. Yeah. And they had to use jumper cable. He grabbed the power. That's the first movie, though. But he grabbed the power lines. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> started on fucking Robocop. <laughs> but you know, I, I I agree. This should it should be negative one. On this on this point, yeah, he should be the one talking. But also have I will put Eric Rickbeard right next to him. Mm-hmm. You know, like that's just like his bodyguard. You know, like okay, that's his guard. That's his right hand man. So, you know, have negative one telling Redbeard aid. Or let him speak in front of you know Dark Order. Hey, this is you should be you know turn heel. You know, make it more heelish, more evil, like how his dad did it. Uh, and if they try to respond to him back, Eric Redbeard is right there, then he'll you know put his foot down. Like he had to listen to what Negative One says. So, you know, something creative like that will be will will benefit and will work just to make Dark Order a little bit more heelish. If that's the if that's one scenario, the other scenario could be as well. You know, bring back you know. Try to re, pretty much redevelop Evo Uno to become a you know he could take over, but have him like how he debuted in AEW, how Chris said earlier, like with the minions, you know, sitting down, have him come back to that as well. If he could, if he could go back to that evil era, like it's, 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 since his name is Evo Uno, he might as well go fucking back to that era, or yeah. like red eyes or something that you know something that possesses him or that makes him ghost heal, something that will make sense to it, in order for Dark Dark Order to go ahead. Straight full on heel, so they have to do something about that. I mean, I agree that his their baby face commotion. All right, it's already done. Yeah, it's it, it's done. It's over. We had great times, great laughs. I mean, we do have great times in BTE. We see them, you know, <clears throat> you know, fucking around. But now it's like how you, everybody said it's back to business. So I think we definitely they need to be that badass heel, you know, faction again. Because right now, as of, as we speak, Inner Circle, which we're gonna get into in the, in the few. They're not being the badass heels right now. They're being a joke, in my opinion. But I will give my opinion about that when we talk about the main event. So let's move on now. Well, real quick, I I like to finish that off with saying there's only one choice for the new leader of the Dark Order. Who's that? Ah, Anna J. Oh, interesting. Okay. Okay. That's the only direction I want it to go. She earns it. She's she's worked her ass off. Um, She's gotten leaps and bounds better. Um, very little mic time, but I don't think the leader needs it. I'd love to see what she can do as a, just a raging bitchaholic. You and know I, don't mean that, yeah. I don't mean that in a sexist term. I mean that in just like pure evil lady. Just like she's the queen slayer. That's just, I love that name. I mean, obviously, you know, Seth Rollins had that, but she could be the female Seth Rollins in no time if they give her the opportunity. And uh, I want that that's all I no you know what chris this is that will actually do two really big things that everybody's going to talk about that's going to elevate the women's title number mm-hmm. one number two that's going to get everybody talking in the wrestling world it's like all oh, right a female leader of a faction with mostly oh, men she's leading it. a bunch of dudes which yeah, yeah. everybody's it's going to be kind of like the like like you know a woman w- winning the world heavyweight championship or being the main event like everybody was talking about what the the ronda Rousey, charlotte flair you know what was that name again who's that lady you just spoke of ronda, <laughs> ronda Rousey. 
Rousey. There you go. Rousey, Rousey. Rousey. <laughs> you, you know, you know my accent, Chris. You your know Pomona, I have an accent. Your Pomona accent. Your yeah, my Pomona. Accent? Okay. My, my surfer accent. You know my okay, accent, dude. I I'm a block away from the beach, homie. You're in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my middle I literally of nowhere. live a block away from Ronda Rousey, so you can. Yeah. <laughs> I've I have my accent, so anyhow. It's all good, dude. It's no, all good. but I was saying, like, like, yeah, the, and and you know. And Becky Lynch and that and that like everybody was yeah. when, when you put women in a new position in wrestling, everybody talks about it, especially you know? a position like this. That's not really I can't think of any time um, ministry didn't have any females. Stephanie didn't really count. China wasn't the leader of DX. Mm hmm. And you could build so many female uh, jazz baby was on her own in uh, the Impact players. If if she's the the head, um, if Anna J is the head of Dark Order and the champion, you could build mm -hmm. so many babyface women against her. That's Fuck, the yeah, you can. whenever yeah. you have powerful heels, you always could have something to build new baby faces. Because most of the babyface women, like I, what Red Velvet. I don't really know that much about her, and I don't really have a reason to care at the moment. Yeah, well, that's because Red Velvet's, a, I'd say, not a great example of a lot of TV time and wrestling time for you to get to know her. If you said Big Swole, who's had both. Yeah, Big Swole's, yeah, a, Big Swole's a great representation of a lot of airtime, a lot of wrestling time, but I don't know if we care about her enough yet to where I would pick her in a feud over Britt Baker. Yeah, well, I'm, I want to see some more like unique and interesting things out of like big swole because it's like red velvet you know, is uh, like maybe give she, time, give if time. Red, but if you re put red velvet in a feud with like anna J, it could be interesting you know yeah. you could you know more jade cargill I, anybody you know yeah well she's gonna destroy the division when that yeah there you that's go. a different list okay yeah, jade cargill versus anna J. That, that'd be a cool you know that'd be cool wow <sighs> I, I i love that idea that's that's a lot that's another bold statement. Yeah, because you're, you're, you're not going to have negative one, it just turned 10. He's not going to go, I mean, they're not on the road, but he's probably not going to consistently be at whatever arena AEW is. He's got to go to school, for Christ's sake. got to go to school. <laughs> no, but you know what I mean, though? It, just, it doesn't have to be necessarily him being on TV. He could just... Right, he could, he could, do, like, he could do like segments and have yeah. them film and then send them in. Which negative yeah. one, negative one, do your homework. Be on the phone, be on the phone. Okay, yes. It'd be, it'd be really cool if he was the leader for a couple of weeks and then maybe ran like a, a tryout type of deal. Like, I need, a, I need someone to replace me and I have my eyes on all of you. And then they run that segment for a while. That'd be pretty cool. I, I would like to see uh, him have John Silver do his homework. And then, <laughs> and, then, and then he says, why why'd you get me a B? I was asking for an A. And then he throws yeah, the papers at him. Throw the, oh, man, throw the papers, going. dude. Oh, you are the best. Hey, but I'll say this negative one. Enjoy, you know, being a kid. You know, don't yeah. be in too much of a hurry to grow up. You know, that's, that's what yeah. I'll say. And defend uh, that title, bro. You yeah, gotta take that out title, Marvel's son, man. Come on, yeah, definitely. definitely. All right, um, we can move on now. I'm sorry, I just had to get that NJ push in there because you know, no, no worries, no worries. All right, so let's go ahead and move on. Then, uh, we did see that Young Buck segment with Don Callis when they went to Don, uh, Kenny Omega's house. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, um, I'm gonna let Money Mike talk, you know, take this one away. Yeah, you can handle this one. What's this up with weird. that, well, Money Mike? <laughs> no, well, sure. Talk, you want to talk about money? What about Kenny's house? Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Nice house. Um, I don't know. I, I wasn't a big fan of this segment. Uh, it just kind of said it seemed like something to have Don Callis in for the week. Uh, Kenny, I'm sure he got a, a much deserved, you know, week off or something. He wasn't an impact. He wasn't on Dynamite. You know, uh, he defended his. Well, he actually, he did not. Did he defend his title? No, he didn't. No, 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 no. So, yeah. So, you know, he's been on both shows, both brands, vacation. Cool. Um, they could have had this segment at Dynamite. Uh, but I guess they wanted to show off the awesome painting. The painting. Uh, <laughs> yes. With the abs and, uh, you know, all that good stuff. So, I, I wish I looked that good at, at, at 50. <laughs> you know. Yeah. It, it was kind of a throwaway segment to me, but I don't know. It it was a so-so. All <laughs> <laughs> right. Mr. Weedson, what's up with this shit? <laughs> uh, I agree with Mike. They could have had it somewhere else. Maybe Dynamite or whatever. Commercial. I didn't really care. You know what I mean? Uh, for me, it didn't make no sense. I mean, he wasn't there. Cool. Whatever. Blah, blah, blah. Keep it moving. It, it, I didn't really care. Yeah. It, just, it, it was just there to 
know Kenny Omega is doing something. Yeah. You know? That's, that's, yeah, I agree. It was just, yeah. Blah, that's how I see it. I know M- you, well, MGC, you're the Don guy over here, so I know you were happy. <laughs> you were happy to see Don Callis with some six pack, I'm pretty sure. This <laughs> now, what Oh I'll my f- god, you you mother you had to bring that picture. <laughs> I had yeah, to the, the picture was a lot. That's the picture so was great. a lot. And so I must say, I must say about this is that you know, it's it's building Don Callis up as I I've been I posted in the group that I want Don Callis to be like, you know, the you like your Eric Bischoff kind of Vince McMahon authority figure heel that like all the you could build all the baby faces up again. So like if you if Kenny ever turns back to baby face in the future, you could still put another like heel wrestler under Don Callis's wing wing under his management and build baby faces and heels up at, like under Don Callis in those feuds where, where he's involved. So that's like one of the best things you could get out of that. Other than that, that painting is so hot. Mm. But, <laughs> I knew it. That's I, those, we got them we got them chocolate bar abs over here, bro. Oh See like my, like even oh even the young man. bucks like the second they saw it like like they had to break kayfabe because they had to wipe the drool. They had yeah, to wipe... I'd like to know. I'd like to know if they knew about that already. They, or have, that... To, they have to wipe. They have to wipe the drool off their mouth. Like, oh, I gotta. I, I'm sorry. I gotta. They get. They had to like put a pillow over their crotch. They had to... <laughs> yeah. MGC, ladies and gentlemen. MGC. There you go. Too hot. Hey, hey. Like Don Callis said. Gods amongst insects, you know. <laughs> they can't. They they don't know Leo Tolstoy as far as they know Toy Story, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Here's another Easter egg on that. Another mention of Japan when the young bucks mention that. So that keep an eye on what I'm saying. So all right, that's already Easter egg number two. So I, I want to go ahead and move on with that segment because that segment was blah. Yeah. Now, let's go ahead. Did move. anyone did anyone pick up um Don Callis being slightly pseudo racist to Michael Nakazawa at all? Yes, he was. He was was he, he doesn't Michael Nakazawa yeah. speaks like perfect English, right? Yes. Okay. Yes. He was talking to him, I think I, I have to go watch it again, but with like he was kind of doing the thing when a person who thinks speaking to someone in an accent will just make them understand the English that they don't speak oh, better. He was like are you okay? Yeah, yeah. He was doing that thing where if you speak slower, maybe they'll understand it. And he put like an accent. I was like, did that? Yeah. I know it's on purpose, but that's okay. That's where they went with that one. I get it. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't like it, but I get it. <laughs> yeah, I don't like it either. And it's funny that, you know, Michael Lacazella speaks Spanish too. Yeah. I mean, he's just being the young boy now. And it's like, all right. I mean, I get it because of the Kenny thing. It's pretty, that part was funny. Well, he, he is Kenny's like road dog. So, whatever. yeah, yeah. No, I understand like, all that. He's like the Jimmy Hart for Kenny Omega. Yeah, no, I get that. I just like, thought you know the, Jimmy Hart was pushed it. It was very like, I'm not personally <laughs> offended by it because it has nothing to do with me. But I was like, that's a bit much. I mean, I love, yeah. I love uh, Michael Nakazawa. I've like for those who don't know, you should watch his matches with D- in DDT. Like Michael Nakazawa even had a great like street brawl with Kota Ibushi a, uh, a while back. You know, and that I think it was like at a convention, and they were just fighting all over the seats in the hotel, and that was like that's something to check out. So you know. Like the like before, like Michael Nakazawa was jobbed out for the rest of his, of his career. Show him some love, and you know, and from his DDT days, I got love for Michael Nakazawa. We, I love you, so. Definitely. Definitely. There you go. There you go. Now let's move on with that. We did uh, yeah, see definitely. Cody Rhodes, Peter Avalon, PP Ray. There you go. So I mean, I was really happy to see Peter Avalon get some. You know, time, some TV time now on Dynamite instead of Dark. So congratulations to him to see him on, you know, on Dynamite. And I mean, I'm a big fan of, you know, of Peter Avalon and Ray Roses, which we had here on the show before. But one of the greatest local tag team in SoCal, PP Ray. So, I mean, oh, oh yeah, definitely. Well, they were tag team of the year in SoCal on Censor.com. Uh, I believe 2019 it was before Peter went to uh, AEW. So that they were the hottest uh, tag team out here in, in California, but Fire. Money Mike, that match between uh, Peter Avalon and Cody Rhodes, um, it was okay, I guess. Uh, but I, my my favorite part was the ending, the the very end where he was going to hit his face, and then rather than getting his face hit, 
he just tapped out yes. right there and then. You know, I thought that was kind of funny. Uh, you know, it, it is what it is. And um, <laughs> of course, he wasn't going to beat Cody, you know, even with uh, any distraction from Jade. Uh, but it was fun to see him on Dynamite and, you know, uh, pretty good, uh, He, you know, pretty good showing he had there um, for what it was. And I uh, put him more on Dynamite. He's a, an entertaining character for sure. Mm -hmm, definitely. CK1. Your thoughts about that one? Yo, I thought that was going to be, and I predicted, and it looked like it was going to be a quick finish. Um, I thought it was going to be exactly the way it was after the crossroads. I thought it was going to be Peter comes in, he's a little silly, takes the crossroads, one, two, three, jobs him right out. Uh, they put on, I think, maybe like a nine-minute match. Might have been a little bit less than that. Um, but I was impressed that they allowed Avalon to have that much time to really shine. Um, you can lose a match, but you don't lose uh, – the war, I guess. And what I mean by that is that it gave more people a chance to see more Peter Avalon on broadcast television. And he had enough time to work. He hit that six superplex from the top. Cody took some bumps, sort of put Peter over, made him look like a threat. I was definitely like, are they going to have Peter pull this one off in some weird angle and win somehow? I thought the low blow was going to do it, like a low blow into the surprise roll up. Um, Peter lost in Peter's style. I love that. He was about to get slapped inside the figure four and just tapped out to the slap and not the leg lock. I was not like, the face. Not I know. I was like, that is that is a beautifully protected loss right there. I love that. Um, uh, yeah, of course, man. That was the most beautiful as Peter Avalon will take care of my Oh yeah. Um yeah. that's that's good, man. I was just I was glad to see that it wasn't gonna be a, a four second job and they gave him time to shine. Um, I'm yeah, you know, I am happy that uh, Peter got his, you know, moment of shine at least for like 10 minutes. On television, shit. The most, I mean, that was more time than he's had on. Uh, if you take all the dino, all the, all the darks, and add that up, I think he had more time in this match than all of those added up. Which no, is, no, 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 no. I'm, he, I'm he, he had more time on dark. I'm fucking around. I'm <laughs> just, I'm just giving kudos hey, to the booking. I'm, I'm defending Peter Avalon here, right? Tell me too, P. for P. sure. P. Ray, P. P. Ray. So, yeah. I, I want to say is that I like, I like the pretty Peter Avalon gimmick way more than the librarian. And yeah, like way more because you know you get some more, you get some more, yeah, you get some more magic out of Peter. You get some more personality. You know, it's not it's not as limited to the one thing. Yeah, because the, yeah. the 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 library and that theme song isn't fun either. That's it's just you know that opening theme of the library and it's just going someone going Boring. like the whole time. Yeah, like we're watching Silent Library. And it's like come on, there's got to be more to. <laughs> You gotta have some more to, the, to it than that than checking out books. I mean, <laughs> I got books on the shelf. I don't need, you know, I don't need them in the ring, <laughs> unless you're hitting, yeah. you know. But uh, but Peter, you know, working his magic. I I, I want to see some more pretty Peter Avalon. You know, like rep, like I'm feeling my California pride burn up. You know, ever since Ivan, you got me into PP Ray. I've been I've been all about it. Rep representing Cali. That's right. You know, yeah, let's go. That's right. That is right. Now, I want to move on to this other one that we did see the Moxley, you know, so Moxley match defeated Camarado. Okay, cool. Now, we, we did see the aftermath, we did see him coming in. Oh, like, you know, he wants to be on top of the mountain. Here's another Easter egg he mentioned. It could be anybody from Mexico, from Japan, it could be from. Okay, we're seeing this. That's what Easter egg number three. Am I correct? Am I there? Three. Right? Three. three. That's three. All right, that is three. So yeah, and then I'll add. You know, I'd rather really get to it before we get. I'd rather really just get to it once and all right now. All right, so we saw that Easter egg, and we saw another one. Lance Archer was wearing a Suzuki gun sweater. That's number four. Three or four? Four. Cuatro. Four. Okay. Cuatro, right there. So you have four different Easter eggs. On two different platforms. Okay. Remind you that Lance, Lance Archer was a former Suzuki gun, and Matt can confirm that. Mm -hmm. Suzuki gun. Yes, correct. So, all these references, yes, Seltzer did say, oh no, they were just doing it for the hell of it. Uh, they did, New Japan ain't gonna do no season desist. I mean, for what? I mean, if anything, they're doing New Japan a favor, blah, blah. I'm like, ah. I'm holding my mouth because hey, I, I I've, promise, got, I've got another. I promise got another, I wasn't gonna talk shit, but I'm holding it. <laughs> I've got I'm another wrestling it. prayer. I've got another wrestling <laughs> prayer now. Minoru Suzuki, please. <laughs> you know I'm saying this right now. It's uh, it's it's gonna happen. That means that New Japan's already in the loop. They're in the works. 
it's it's a, it's a wrap. It's a done deal. New Japan is in this shit. For yeah. them, all of a sudden, why the fuck are you really sporting I out? Not even that. Um, I think they're they're also down with it because now you see Tommy Tunga and a couple of the other Bullet Club guys actually going at these guys. And at first, they weren't really going at them in the beginning. They weren't really saying nothing too much. But now they're really actually going at them, like, "Hey, right. if you want to they're smoke? You're gonna come very, get to yeah. smoke." I mean, yeah, the, the Chris making Jericho. It very obvious they want it. Yeah. The the Chris Jericho um Kenny Omega feud started as a Twitter thing, if I'm not mistaken, right? It did like, as a Twitter yeah. thing. Yeah, so that I mean, this is the perfect way. Oh, kind of like Cardi B and Lacey Evans. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we're never gonna talk about that again. That was the last time we mentioned that thing. Never yeah, again. same. <laughs> <laughs> so, so like obviously the first, I think, what was it? Do you think it's gonna pop off at Revolution? Then we're we're gonna see, um, we're gonna see like my my prayer match, Kenta versus Moxley for the the IWGP US title at Revolution. I mean, come on, like once again, Kenta lives in Florida. I, you know what, the, that's the biggest question. Like how, you know, like how Kofi said, yeah, Tomatonga, he's getting involved more with it. He's talking shit back. And he, this is like more like a civil Twitter bullet club war. You know, you have the elite and you in and J- and Japan's bullet club. You might have a bullet club civil war within each other. Um, maybe, maybe it could be Kenta, maybe, because obviously we have New Japan Strong Style in the United States. Mm-hmm. We might see just, you know, stars from that coming or going to AEW or Impact. I'll be more than happy with that. Carl Fredericks. I have so much love for Carl Fredericks. <laughs> I got so much love for Clark Connors. Well, Danny Limelight even shouted out Clark Connors on our interview. Well, like, yeah. well Team Filthy. Team yep. Filthy. Tom Lawler. None of the one who could actually jump ship to go go to AEW or, you know, Impact. All of our all. But you of know, our he's mostly lines. an MLW guy. Yeah, he's an MLW guy. But, I mean, what about – that's another thing, too. What about if MLWs are getting involved, too? Like, you, what about if this they what Because they pre-taped. They couldn't do it. They're pre-taped. <laughs> yes, yeah, something, true. That's true. That's something true. to keep in mind, like John Moxley's G1 record. I think there was only like two guys that beat him in the G1 or two or three guys that beat him in the G1. Like so one good. of them. Yeah. And, and one of them is Jay White. And remember, Jay White's disappearing for a while, little while. It takes a while to get through quarantine and j- to get to Florida. So Jay White's the other run-in on AEW Dynamite or at a pay-per-view or an impact that we could see. Just him getting on that mic and antagonizing Moxley. Like, Moxley needs a very deep, powerful opponent, you know, because he was the top guy. So you're going to need to bring over somebody from somewhere else to to antagonize Moxley and once again like Mike mentioned it could be Nick Aldis could be Jay White could be Kenta I want I want somebody big like that up against Moxley let me say this right quick and I want you guys I want to hear you guys thoughts before we jump on to the Jericho main event one what are your guys' thoughts what about these these guys these promotions are sitting together let's say how we are you know like a you know Zoom meetings or, you know, they're planning a biggest plot, the biggest event in the world. Remind you, you have WWE WrestleMania, right? What about they do their own type of WrestleMania? There we go. During that WrestleMania weekend, NWA, AEW, New Japan, AAA, MLW, shit, Ring of Honor. CMLL. CMLL. MLL. Lucha Underground. XPW. Oh, that's XPW. <laughs> <laughs> wrestling from Ho- wrestling from Hollywood, you Maybe, know. You never know. Game changer wrestling. Let's get if they on. do a two night event during WrestleMania week weekend. Let's say they do it during the week. Let's say they bust it out on a Thursday and Friday. You know, because if we know WrestleMania is on a Saturday and Sunday. NXT is on Saturday, yeah. That's how you go takeovers. Problem would be it would be good, but the problem would be money. Yeah, you know they're not you gonna. Have to pay, you would have to pay all these guys, then you have to quarantine these guys. Then you and he's got to, the cat. I mean, uh, Tony Khan's I mean, got yeah, the cash, but yeah, yeah it's but the it's audience. Well, Tommen too is Tommen. Like, yeah, you might have the cash, but then how fast can this person get here? Did we book for this day? Then you got fourteen days of Corona. Then you might catch Corona. Then if you, you know, what I'm saying it's always it's too many what ifs. So this I mean, might be after. Me, this but, might be after the yeah. quarantine's over. Like after everybody's vaccinated. So let, we, we'll probably see this event maybe like 2022 or something like that. 
So this might be like springtime 2022 is like the soonest we could see something like this. But like I even I've I've fantasized about an event like Ivan just described and I want it to be called Emperor of Pro Wrestling and freaking mm. that's what I want and the largest outdoor venue in the United States is the Indy 500 racetrack in Indiana and that's you know Indiana's right next door to Illinois where they had Illinois Chicago where they had all out so that's a, that's very that's a yeah. good location it it seats 200,000 people max capacity mm. everybody's catching corona <laughs> <laughs> yeah we're we're waiting for 2022 or 2023 yeah, we'll We'll see. But all right. Um, let's go ahead and move on with the main event with the inner circle going around with each other. Uh, we did see Sammy Hager, which we did see him show up, giving a little cameo appearance. My favorite guy. rock singer before I ever got into Japanese rock. That 2005 Matthew would have lost his damn mind. Those are those were all of my favorite things. <laughs> Wrestling and Sammy Hagar Van Halen. My two favorite things when in 2005. And also we had uh, Santana and Ortiz and MJF and Jericho. Now, I'm going to say it right quick. Let me speak for myself right quick. I, I'm going to say this right now, and then I'm, I'm going to then this question goes to Kofi Weston. Jericho needs to retire, man. That moon salt looked like shit. He, you could tell. <laughs> uh, you, okay, you could tell he scraped his head. I don't know what Jericho's problem. I think Jericho is is laid back too much like oh, i got this i already know how to wrestle i don't need to to train or watch my weight drink a couple cocktails and not give a shit i mean and then come one ring do what i can i'm sorry jericho you need to get your ass back on the, on the diet bro because that moonsault yoga. you could have uh, or yeah back to ddp <laughs> yoga man yeah because just start bro, you, you could have broken your neck that night so thank god knock on wood nothing happened to you but Jericho needs to get back on the diet. He needs to get back on the yoga. He needs to start start cutting out, cut down on the drinking. Yeah, no fat shaming, but I think it is the drinking. Um, he, he has nothing left. The bubbly. Drink, but yeah. It, Stop with a bit of the bubbly. Of Omaha Steaks. I mean, he he, yeah. he gives the Omaha Steak advertisement on his show. <laughs> like every, every... Right. So, Mr. Wheatson, your thoughts about that match? Um, I don't like the... I don't like the inner circle anymore. I'm kind of tired. They kind of turned into a joke also. Um, I think with the inner circle is uh, too many people. Not too many people, but too many different characters. They're not all on the same, you know what I'm saying, footing. They, I don't, they, they're just doing too much for me. Then one, that match didn't make any sense because you have a fucking tag team. Word. Thank you. the inner circle. They're fucking literally... A tag team, Santana Ortiz, the longest tenure in there. And they fuck, I'm like, why are we having a tag team match to see who's a tag team? And then the circle, and you have a tag team match. You have a tag. I didn't, I just didn't understand it. Didn't make any sense to me. But I kind of knew that it was going to go the way it went with M, um, MJF and Chris Jericho. But, you know, kudos to them. But I don't I – ch I usually change the channel after shit gets predictable. I'm going to be honest mm, with you, man. Very true, very true. Yeah, I I'm with you. Once everybody... it gets predictable, once it got to the end, and I kind of saw everybody start hitting their moves and, and certain sets, and then once you see a person go out for at least four or five minutes, you kind of know that what's going to happen next. You know, I, I, I knew from the beginning of the match MJF was going to win. I knew he was going to get the pin, you know. I, it was nothing telling me he wasn't. So I, I don't know. I mean, it is what it is. What it is with the inner circle, I'm just not buying into it right now. Ah, okay, all right. They're about as bad as retribution, if you ask me. <laughs> Fuck I woke gosh. that woke me up. <laughs> <laughs> Money, just, let's just be let's be honest. Yeah. What mm. has the inner circle really done recently? Nothing. Not right now. Yeah. The only thing they added was just MGM and Warlow, but that's it. That's and it. and that, even that was a joke in a game. They did a fucking musical. Oh my god. That actually won an award, by the way, in the I think in the New Yorker. <laughs> <laughs> that's a, that's why MJF is always carrying the plaque with them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That won that won a legit award, which I mean it was good, but did it have its place? I, don't know. <laughs> hey, I, mean, it depends, it depends. I enjoyed it. So I'm just not buying it. I'm not buying want, into it. 
I want to say this about Jericho is that, um, you know, like, like I think Jim Cornette said this phrase, like, how can we miss you if you won't go away? So I think uh, Jericho could benefit from like a break, you know? Yeah. No shame on his body, but it like, like if there's wear and tear, if you're losing your touch from like, we, I think Jericho's getting burnt out. I think that's actually what it is. So I think Jer he even has a song called burn me out, you know? So like in Fozzie, so burn me out like like literally you're burnt out bro so like yeah take, take like a t he should take like a month and a half break and maybe come back differently just for in the meantime because like right now like the the inner circle should be a faction with titles or titles that they're challenging for so i think jericho should be you know like should come back and then have a very like credible opponent from the outside to go up against. I know I thought of I thought of somebody, you know, Minoru Suzuki is one possibility, but like we're gonna have to wait. I'm I'm thinking of I have some other people in mind. MJF is another person. Like one of the things I want to see with the new Impact AEW partnership is that X Division title coming to being defended on AEW television, seeing some Ultimate X matches, you know, and Sammy Guevara. That's who. That's who should be t challenging for it. You know, if there's anybody in, you know, the AEW roster who should be challenging for an X division championship, Sammy Guevara versus Manic. Let's see it happen. Nice. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Fire. TJP versus uh, Sammy. Mm -hmm. Sammy. Okay, Guevara. I'll be touched. Spanish God versus the Phil Filipino American Flash. I got my cousins. Oh, like wow. ready to go. We got the San Miguel beers <laughs> up against the Coronas. Ah. <laughs> uh, it was a Corona. We have been on Modelo, so you know. Modelo, uh, Modelo. brought to you by Modelo. Modelo, okay. we got. <laughs> I'm hey, not going to pay for this advertisement. We got red, Filipino Red Horse beer versus Modelo, Red Horse or San Miguel. You know, we got it going. It's like it's like it's like he's wearing the manic uh, disguise, but those Filipino flags are all over his uni all over his outfit. It's like <laughs> it's like if Manic and TJP are two different people, Manic's also Filipino. <laughs> <laughs> Bunny Mike, talk to me. Okay. So a few months ago, we saw Jericho and Hager make an announcement of we're coming for the, the tag team titles. What happened there? What happened with that? <laughs> bad but it was a stupid decision by bad creative. <laughs> gone uh mjf should have never joined the inner circle I I ever since that happened mm, no mm -mm. mjf is fine on his own he's got his diamond ring or whatever that he can show off his plaque and what dynamite ring yeah there you go he could he's on his own he's fine he has wardlow watching his back uh ever since mjf has joined they've only been fighting each other instead of yeah. going after people I've seen them in more matches against each other than anything, you know? Um, go after Jurassic Express. Go after, There's so many baby faces for them to the work young, with. You know? Uh, instead of having the young... Well, I don't know about the Young Bucks and, and the, the Good Brothers ended up ending up against each other, but, you know, go after the Young Bucks. They're, they have the titles. You're talking about tag teams. Santana we have the whole Impact roster they could work up against now. So bring them in. And not even that. Not uh, Putting Impact aside... They have enough tag teams. They have enough talent in AEW mm -hmm. itself uh, to have a good feud with. And again, MJF should not have been in, in this group. Santana and Ortiz were supposed to win this match by far because they're the actual tag team. It's common knowledge, really. Wow. Yeah, it is, bro. I, I agree. So, yeah, please, you know, something needs to happen here. Uh, MJF has got to get the boot, uh, which is what has been teased since the start, right? So, yeah. Mike, let me ask, let me ask you a question, Mike. Yes. Being that Santana Ortiz aren't the main two for the tag team, what do you do with them? It's you, you get what, what I'm saying. No, you can't. You can't. You can't build <laughs> them up as top contenders if they're not even top contenders in within their own group. Exactly. So, so there you go, Mike for president. <laughs> Mike, for, Mike for president. I gotta, I gotta say this about this episode of uh, AW Dynamite. I think one of the re main reasons this episode was so weak is because what was it? The beach? What was it? Not bash at the beach. Was it beach, beach, beach bash? Break. 
beach, beach break, break coming up in two weeks. Yeah, beach break. I think I think maybe like either ne- the next episode or just the episode after is not going to be that great. And beach and they have like all the good stuffs probably stored up for beach break is probably what's going on. I think beach break might be like the big, you know, because we've been starting to see the impact like roster. I think beach break is going to be the big, you know, impact invasion shows what I might predict. Like they might bring up, bring over like all, it's going to be like a big thing with all the impact guys coming in. And once again, RVD, please, if you're there, don't just sit at home, go <laughs> up, maybe bring some of the ganja, maybe yeah, give Tony Khan some of that ganja, you know? Oh, Steven has says a pretty bad, the weed, the weed. <laughs> <laughs> How Stephen A says it. But hey, of course, why not? Shit, bring some of that ganja. Give some to Tony Khan so he gives him ideas. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> CK1, the floor is yours. All right, man. I've said everything I've ever wanted to say about uh, what's going on in, in the inner circle in the last uh, couple of podcasts, but I'll, I'll try to find a new spin on it. Um, yeah, MJF and Wardlow in the inner circle, I mean, they work together well. Jericho and, and MJF, their banter is great, um, but that's about it. Um, I'd like to have them to pursue the Wardlow turns on MJF a la uh, Virgil and DiBiase. That was the angle I thought they were going to go with. Um, like to have seen that. Wardlow is definitely a breakout star, and that win over Hager was a big deal. I did not see that coming a mile away. Um, and then in an alternate universe, you would have had Hager, Sammy, and Jericho go for the Thrace titles, which are hopefully coming in the next year or two. Um, I don't even know if that was ever a rumor or if that was ever talked about, but having that three-way tag title needs to happen. Um, it doesn't need to happen. I want it to happen because there's so many great trio teams right now. And um, there's no ver- reason that three members of Inner Circle can't be in that division. And it would have to be Hager, Sammy, and Jericho. Otherwise, Sammy gets a face push and or something or the Pride and Powerful get a face push. There's, I don't know. I, I just – those are the only two – teams or Sammy and then Santino or Hughes, those are the only three people I see getting a face push besides Wardlow. Like I just I, I, I like inner circle enough to just wait it out and hopefully something happens and um yeah I don't fucking know where they're going with it though. <laughs> I have no fucking clue. <laughs> I, I'm I'm with you on that. We don't I don't know what where the hell they're going I with I have it. no idea what the end game is for that. No I mean we could throw a lot of assumptions to be honest and it's kind of really difficult. Um even though like the dynamite was not the greatest as of yesterday, viewership. I forgive them. They're, I mean, they they put on so much gold. On them. There's so much gold that they can they can afford a bronze every oh, now. And then. No, I mean, of course. Yes, yes, definitely, definitely. I kind of hope they don't they don't have the inner circle feud with Shaq. I'm <laughs> please no. Oh my god, I, I don't even want to get into it with Shaq right now. <laughs> no, yeah, no, no, no. The, the one thing that AEW should not be doing is repeating what WWE is doing. Do not repeat. Something yeah. Like that. Sh- yeah, I fixed something, something that it was probably that you know it's already been broken. Why? Why? Leave it alone. Do your own shit. Don't follow what the hell Papa Vinny's doing. What he yeah. If the best thing do. that came out of Shaq was Jade Cargill, then I'm cool with it. But leave it at that and let her do her thing. That's yeah. another person yeah, that I, I another person that I we spoke about it last week on the episode. Like I don't know what to do with her either. It just okay. Yeah, have Brandy's her, gone. That's Brandy's it. Brandy's gone. Is like okay. Red Velvet. How Matt said, not much of a big hype. I mean, no pun intended towards her because I mean she, you know, gets needs to get more built up. There's so many other baby Velvet. faces. You know? I mean, not even they could just build her up and just let her whip everyone's ass. Kind yeah. of on some Bianca Belair yeah. shit. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Let her whip everybody's ass, and then I don't know what else to do. I mean, just show. You gotta show her athleticism off. You gotta show something off. Like you see, yeah, the way she's gonna, WWE, she's gotta get in the ring like, at some point, so we know. Yeah, the way WWE shows off Bianca Belair's, you know, athleticism and her physical attributes, they have to start doing that with her. You know, you can't just show off her body and that she looks good. She has to know how to wrestle too. People are eventually gonna be like, all right, can she at least wrestle? Yeah, yeah, I have no idea. I don't think she's ever had a match. I think. Uh, no. I mean, you know, a televised match that's been big enough for me to have seen. She might not have seen it. I mean, we have not. I mean, there's no, she hasn't had no, she hasn't made her wrestling debut at all. She's been training, as all we know as we speak, that she's been working hard training for the past yeah, year. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not buying this smoke with it, man. Yeah, I'm, not. Yeah, I, I'm with you. I, I'm not either. I'm just skeptical. Like, I don't know how much, they, you know, they signed her for, 
but he better be worth it if it was if yeah. it was for a lot. So let's and and not only that, but you're having Shaq included, as Shaq being the manager of her. Yeah, we have to wait and see how that works out. So I'm kind of I'm kind of hoping. Uh... I'm kind of hoping Jade Cargill isn't another Linda Miles. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, Ivan knows who I'm talking about. To. Her with the Basham brothers. Oh my god! <laughs> hey, you know what? She wasn't bad. Bro. No, 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 no. She wasn't bad. She wasn't a bad manager for the Basham brothers. Yes, the gimmick was like some dominatrix shit. I'm like, what the fuck are you doing? Yeah. PG fucking 13. Well, it was PG 13. And I was barely going to the PG at that time. But I'm like, what the fuck are you doing? Why are All you, the kids you know, are like, why are you holding a whip? <laughs> What's that leather you're they, wearing? <laughs> they didn't know it feels so bad, but it feels so good. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, definitely. But overall, Dynamite, they did great in the viewership overall. They did, you know, 854,000. NXT did 659. But NXT won the demographics. They were at 16. Dynamite was at 36. So, at 30, excuse me. So, that's fine. But um, overall, Dynamite, how Matt said, and they made a lot of announcements. They're going to have AEW's Women's Tournament. They're going to have, uh, I believe, uh, number one Battle Royal for the uh, tag team titles, I believe. So, I'm not quite sure what they're going to have for. A lot of great matches coming in two weeks for Bash Break, you know, Beach Break. So we'll have to wait and see Whatever how it's it. called. Yeah. Yeah, well, it's Beach Break. I always say it's Bash Break. I know they want to call it Bash the Beach, but you can't because yeah. Vinny owns the rights for that. So that's going to be a difficult part. So we'll be right back. Ladies and gentlemen, this is uh, the ending of part one. Part two is going to be Pro Wrestling News. Four new signees going to WWE. And these are four top major players, especially. Uh, all of them, in my opinion, are all of them, but Matt will give one of them that is an international star, which we'll, dis we'll discuss about that in part two. And we'll discuss about the NXT this past week and WWE, which uh, Mike's favorite favorite product, WWE. <laughs> Can't wait to see WWE. <laughs> he's going to bury them right now. So we'll be right back, ladies and gentlemen, for part two. Make sure that you click on the other channel for part two. This is the ending of part one. Now, the ending of part one, make sure you enjoy our messages from our special sponsor. So we'll be right back. 